Invention Ambassador Program. That's where I met Lee, another member from the Lemonson MIT Invent Team Program. She introduced this program to me, and uh, I was really excited because you know this is such a great opportunity to inspire the next generation to be so creative and to actually use their own intelligence and their knowledge to build a solution to solve real world program. Uh, I mean, real world challenge. After I got back, I reached out to our school principal, Mr. Murphy. I was really lucky that I got great support from Mr. Murphy. And that's when I started working with Mrs. Corbus. And uh, we fully utilized the um, social media this time. And we reached out to the students, the parents, the local community. We were able to establish a diversified team within a short period of time. And the team is definitely very awesome. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And uh, the team decided to build a system that can actually detect the snow load on the roof. And I will let the team introduce their project in depth later on. But as you can see, this group of intelligent and dedicated students to really observe the challenges around us, they created a system that can actually solve the challenges we have in New England area. And we all live in the era of artificial intelligence. Once this initial prototype is built, we definitely foresee that this solution can be redeployed in any other areas that can face similar situation. As I mentioned um, at the beginning, I work for IBM, and uh, IBM has a long history and a very rich culture to support our local communities. And ever since my own kids started kindergarten in Berica, every year I always go to the local elementary schools to do STEM activities with them. <laughs> And those kids really loved me. And I was able to apply something called the IBM Community Grant for the local schools. And I also applied $2,000 IBM Community Grant for our event team. That really helped the team get started on building their initial uh, prototype. Yay. <laughs> a very experienced UX designer to come to teach the team about something called IBM Design Thinking Methodology. This methodology was developed on top of user-centered design. As you can imagine that every time when we want to design and develop a solution, we really need to think about the user first. We, end, we have to understand the pain points from the user themselves. And once we actually develop this solution, we need to constantly keep in touch with the end users to see whether the solution would best fit their needs. And so this is the IBM design thinking methodology. And the team has been able to apply that during their process. As a parent myself, sometimes I'm concerned about the social media. However, through this process, we were able to actually uh, post our progress through Twitter. And uh, we even started a GoFundMe campaign a few days ago because the team will actually go to Washington, D.C. to demonstrate their final project in June. We, we, can, we can actually use a little help from you. So, you know, if you are supportive to our project, as <laughs> you have always been to, please uh, consider, you know, donate a few dollars to this uh, particular campaign, and that will help the fund for the team to go to Washington, D.C. And uh, this is the end of my presentation. And uh, once again, I really appreciate that all the great support that we got from the Levinson MIT event program and also the local school community and you know our superintendent, the school principal, and all the parents, and especially all the hard work from the teacher and uh, the team members. Mm -hmm. And this team is really wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Liu. I would now like to continue the program by introducing the team members. Um, first, I want to say that Lurica Memorial High School Invent Team consists of students with various STEM backgrounds, and now we come to, we've come together to solve a common housing problem in our community. As I said before, I'm Christian So, a junior in high school, and the team lead, and this is. Hi, my name is Abni Agrawal. I am a senior at BMHS, and I am the marketing lead as well as part of the finance team. I'm Fonathy Saker, I'm in 8th grade, and I'm on the marketing and financing team. I'm Sri Ram Krishnamurthy, I'm the software lead, and I'm also part of the electrical team. I'm Ishan Patel, I'm in 9th grade, and I'm part of the software team. 
I'm Karan Rana. I am electrical lead and I'm also part of software. Hi, my name is Anubra Agarwal. I'm in ninth grade. I'm the finance lead. I'm also part of the marketing team. Hi, my name is Tikshita Kaspadani. I'm in ninth grade and, I, and I'm the research lead and I'm part of the marketing team. Hi, I'm Raghav Vane and I'm part of the marketing team. Hi, I'm Jake Isaac. I'm a senior. Uh, I'm the technical lead. I'm also part of the mechanical team. So before we start off, I wanted to let you guys know a little bit about what um, the MIT Wilson <coughs> Inventing Program actually is. So it's a program that encourages people in grades 6 through 12 to develop their skills in STEM, marketing, and also finance. Um, it, we are one of the 14 teams chosen across the country that received this grant um, from the um, Lemelson program, and we are the only team from Massachusetts that received this grant. Um, this grant was brought to MIT by the Lemelson Foundation. This program aims to cultivate future generations of inventors to create a better world just as we are doing here with our product. Uh, the foundation itself has given out more than $200 million towards this exact mission of inspiring and celebrating young inventors like us to pursue their passions and careers in STEM, marketing, finance, or more subjects as well. Our final presentation will be at Eureka Fest, which will be held at the Smithsonian Museum in Washington, D.C. this June. So the weather in New England can be unpredictable, especially with snowstorms. As our team is based in Massachusetts, we are affected by these conditions. Back in 2015, the most buildings and house roofs collapsed due to the sheer heaviness of snow. Annually, these roofs continue to collapse, causing dangerous living conditions and working environments. As Vanathy mentioned, uh, these conditions with so, so much unpredictable snowfall can cause a lot of dangerous conditions for us consumers as well as business owners and structural engineers and people who have to go up and clean these roofs. So what I would like to do is ask the audience a question and ask you all what you do to prevent roof collapses in your own homes or businesses. So if anyone would like to answer, feel free. We just use a snow rake to try and pull the snow off so it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one of the most common. Well, I'm, a, I'm a structural engineer, so I'm <laughs> <laughs> so, not that I did anything special with it. I designed it for the building code at the time, which was 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I generally don't worry about it, except I do snow rake for uh, ice dams, because there are ice dams that occur because of the way the home is insulated. And sure, it's yes. It's kind of a pain, but. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. So we didn't intend it to clear our roof, but we put 50 uh, solar panels on our on our uh, roof, which basically gives us most all of our electricity. Um, and as soon as it gets a little bit warm, it sheds all that snow off the uh, solar panel. That's and I've awesome. never had a rake yeah. roof. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very expensive roof rake, but, <laughs> but hey, it's helping the environment, so hey, what's yes. next? <laughs> yes, so as a school system with, with large, flat roofs, <laughs> uh, we have had to pay people to go up there and shovel the roofs off, which can also cause damage to the roof structure itself. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes. right. so there are currently two main categories of ways to uh, measure, to evaluate the roof, the roof, the, uh, roof snow. And um, this consists of either measuring the roof snow on measure, measuring the snow on the roof, or measuring it on the ground. And measuring it on the ground may prove inaccurate because uh, this is not representative of the total roof roof snow distribution, and because they essentially project this snow onto the roof, assuming a similar distribution. And also there is and also there is uh, snow drift that can be acute that can be. Um, uh, accumulated on roofs from adjacent houses or houses that are within uh, 20 feet from another house and even roof snow inspect evaluation a lot of it is done at single point at, um, at single points like a one square foot area at single points during single points in time and um, snow accumulates over time and then this gradually wears down the uh, structural integrity of the roof as well so what we need is a system that can address these needs and is accurate and is an accurate um, and remotely ex and remotely accessible to tell the user of the condition of conditions of the roof. So these photos here are courtesy of Marco Lunier, who is the town building inspector. And 
all of these photos here depict groups that have collapsed due to snow, heavy snow loads. <coughs> and one common trait in all of these are the fact that they take place in commercial buildings. Now, with the owners of these buildings tend to underestimate the amount of time that a roof could collapse due to snow. So therefore, they keep putting off the task of having to clear their roofs, which ultimately leads to this. And while this here shows a loss in commercial goods, in the future it can ultimately lead to serious injury and death. Question? So, um, is everything that you're focused on a solution for a flat roof? So currently, yes. And in the future steps, we're going to be going through that soon, is we're actually planning to hopefully go to tilted roofs, but that's a few, much few future iteration. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Is there anything about the technology that you don't think would be applicable, or is it just a matter of understanding the different load conditions on the flat So roof? it's very, so flat roofs, due to normal force, is much easier to actually measure, sure, sure. versus tilted roofs, that gets a bit more complicated. Sure. So right now we want to stick with commercial flat roofs, yes. Okay. Okay. So we can, our team continued to ask ourselves, what is the best way to prevent these snow load, the dangers of snow loading? So our product, we come up with a product which is called the BMHS, the Blizzard Monitoring Hazard System. It consists of two important systems and the physical aspect, which is the mat modular mat-like structure that would be accurately be able to measure the accumulated snow on your roof, and it, because of its modularity, you'll be able to move it across the roof wherever it needs to be. Secondly, the a ultrasonic height sensor will be able to measure the height of the snow and then hopefully calculate the density and predict what kind of snow is actually on your roof. All of this will be able to be pushed to an app where you can actually monitor this through remotely. But this is only half of the novel invention. So on the other half, we, as Christian was saying, these ultrasonic and the weight sensors will be measured and be sent to a hub. And this hub will send to, be sent to the cloud where across the cloud, anywhere you have your phone and with an app, or you can access a website, you can find everything about your uh, your rooftop. Yes, yes. so yes. It will yes. send, um, it, it, a, it it will send an alert when it reaches a certain threshold based yeah. on your building's location. Um, and it actually does this via email. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, on the threshold, how do you decide what the threshold is? The threshold, because you want to give the people time to react to it. The threshold is based on the building code yeah. and the location of it in the, in the New England area. We have the building codes of where it is in the entire, and like when it was built. Based on that, you can find where the, like where it's located and how much it can take before the, it can structurally go down and we would warn it well before that so that you can do something about it, warn people to get out or to take action and clean the roof. We'll also have question, have a time at the end to ask questions. Yeah. <laughs> Just so like, maybe we'll be able to answer your questions throughout the presentation. We'll also have like 10 to 15 minutes at the end to answer any more questions too. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. That's a tough question to, once you know, how much snow is on the roof, and you know what your roof can support, and let's say you're you're below the threshold of yeah. where you think you're gonna start shoveling, yeah. and it'd be great if there was some way to, to tie this app to the, the future projection of snowfall uh, yeah. or yeah. something. Yes. So we're actually working on I don't have to shovel today, but if, if the storm comes next week that they're predicting, I'm gonna have to shovel. At that point, yeah. get ready, get ready to, to do yeah, You know exactly when you need to shovel. Mm -hmm. Three prediction. Mm -hmm. So um, for uh, testing our system, currently we've been using calibrated weights and a calibrated heights uh, to test our individual weight sensors and height sensors. And we've also been used, and uh, we've also we've also been um, been using sample sensors to ensure the uh, to ensure that our that our um, system is sending real time data to our app in a timely manner. We'll also be making t continuing to test with fake snow throughout the future months um, and through other means to test our product while snow isn't flowing or snow isn't going well so that way we can met, be ready for when snow is actually coming next year. So as we mentioned at the beginning of this presentation we received a grant from the M Mumbleson MIT program um, that we have used on many things to fund our project 
Some of those things include mechanical components and electrical components, as well as some brochures and printing um, and promotional products. We also need more money to fund our trips to Eureka Fest um, this coming June. So some of the fundraising ideas that we have had are raffle tickets and bake sales, as well as a GoFundMe, as Ms. Lou mentioned earlier today, uh, that we are using to fund our trips and travel. So as Angela said, we will be going to Eureka Fest this June, and one of our plans for Eureka Fest are to plan out our travel options. Right now we've been booking tickets with JetBlue, United, and Delta Airlines to take our team to Washington. We also want an accurate functional prototype, with, um, which, is remotely, which, which can be remotely accessible, and uh, this would be it would, it would be user friendly as well as allow for easy decision making. So, how can this product grow and be continued to be developed? Well, our future steps before and after Eureka Fest is to actually address other problems with snow loading and the dangers of snow loading, such as uh, snow drifts. Snow drifts can be caused by uh, intense winds or adjacent buildings, which can cause uneven snow loading across the roof that's un, un, um, expected by the building. And also, we'll also be trying to cater our product to tilted roofs or non-flat roofs through sensors such, excel, such as accelerometers, which can possibly also predict avalanche, snow avalanches in the future. So going on what Christian said, to do those things, we're gonna have to be conducting additional lab testing and tuning of our product for these new ideas we want and these new things we want to implement into our product. We also want to have complete ruggedization <coughs> for the longevity of our product in the elements while it's doing its job, alerting the user and sending that data. Finally, we want to implement it on roofs of businesses um, for live testing so we can test the product in like a live environment. To get progress, to get updates on our progress, you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, our website, and our email. You can also find our business card outside on the communications table. Uh, finally, our event team would like to thank the Lemelson MIT program, Florica Memorial High School, our IBM volunteer, Ms. Florence Blue, um, Mr. Ray Morrison, and our BMH, BMHS IT department, uh, Mr. Thomas Calzini, who is part of our Florica Memorial High School robotics team, uh, Mr. Victor Tom, who is from the Bedford Rotarians and BAE, and we would also like to thank Ms. Scrovis, who this would not have uh, been able to be put together without. Uh, thank you all for your time, and we really appreciate you all coming here. <laughs>